In this presentation, we will talk about resistors in series and parallel. We will say what it means to be in series and what the consequences are, and what it means to be in parallel and what the consequences of that are. We will be working with Ohm's law, V equals IR. We're to assume that R is constant and it does not change. It does not depend on either voltage or current. Voltage is an amount of energy per charge. Current is the rate at which charge goes by. So how much charge passes by a point in the circuit per second, for instance. And the resistance is the sort of difficulty the charges encounter as they move around a part of circuit. High resistance is hard to move around. Low resistance, it's easy to move around. We are going to be talking about circuits, some closed path in which charges can flow. So we will often have a battery, which we will think as the, the source or the impetus of the flow, some, some pushing, some, some reason for the charges to flow. And there should be some pathway. There may be devices on that pathway, but there'll be some pathway leading from one side of the battery to the other. If there is no pathway to lead to one side of the battery to the other, then the circuit is said to be open or broken. Also, when there is a path, it does not have to be unique. There can be more than one path, as we will see when we talk about parallel resistors. In the picture shown on the, the first, on the left, it is an open circuit. There is not a path so the, the wire, the red wire, is not connecting to the battery. It is not a closed path, but an open path. So no current is flowing and the light bulb is not lit. On the right side of the picture, when the wire, the red wire does connect to the battery, there is a closed circuit. So if current does flow through the light bulb and therefore the light lights. So here's an analogy. A charge leaving battery is like you after you've had a good night's rest. You're full of energy, you're raring to go. You have your tasks to perform during the day. That is your circuit, the things you're going to do, and then you are going to complete your circuit. You're going to return to your bed at the end of the night. having, And then you, being the kind of person you are, you're going to use up all of your energy, just fall into bed utterly exhausted, having used up all of your energy. And that's what the charge will do. It will take its energy, its voltage, the energy per charge, and it's going to use it all up within the course of the circuit. So in this analogy, when you get out of bed and are full of energy, you look to the tasks of the day. You're going to have to perform several tasks. This is like resistors in series. The charges must pass through different resistors to, to close the path. And the more difficult the task, the more energy it will require. So you're going to divide up your energy based on the task. The more difficult the task, the more energy it will require. So the tasks are analogous to resistors. More difficult tasks are higher resistance. Your energy is the voltage, and the voltage is going to be divvied up among the resistors. And the higher the resistance in the path, the more voltage drop, the more voltage or energy it's going to take up in that crossing that resistor. So this diagram shows resistors in series. So we are leaving the battery, the voltage source at the top and the current is coming out. And to complete its circuit, it must go through resistor one and then go through resistor two. We may look at the voltage between resistor one and resistor two and see what the voltage is, but that's not a possible path for any charges to take. Here we're representing the circuit even more diagrammatically. The zigzag lines are resistors. The, the short and long and short and long parallel lines represent the battery. It's marked by 5V, so it's a 5 volt battery. Then down in the lower left hand corner is these is the ground. And so we have a well established zero and then the, the top of the battery is five volts higher than that. And that represents a push, that the charges are pushed out of the top of the battery. There is a closed circuit, so they will return to the lower, the short side of the battery. 
And on this path, the, the charges will encounter first the one kilo ohm resistor, and then they will encounter the two kilo ohm resistor. There, there is no place else to go. Any charge that went through the one must go through the two to finish its path to the to the to to home to, to back to the other side of the battery. The charges have no place else to go. Those two resistors are going to see the same current. So we have resistors in series, and each resistor individually obeys Ohm's law. So for resistor 1, we have V1 equals I1 times R1, and similarly, we have V2 equals I2 times R2. But as we've established that for resistors in series, they seem the same. They see the same current. So the I1 is equal to the I2 is just the overall current for the circuit. So next we introduce the concept of equivalent resistance. So if I have a combination of two or more resistors and I can replace them with a single resistor and that single resistor sees the same current and the same voltage as the combination did, then that is said to be an equivalent resistance. So let's do that for series. So we know that going from some point A B, and in between A and B, I have a series combination, then uh, the voltage adds up that, that first way I must go through a one, then I must go through two, and I must use my full voltage VAB to go through one and two. So the voltage AB is voltage one plus voltage two. Each resistor obeys Ohm's law. So V1 is I1 times R1 and V2 is I2 times R2. But we know that these, this was a series combination and series combinations see the same current. So I1 is equal to I2 is just equal to the current going through the circuit. It would also be the same current going through the equivalent. That's the definition of the equivalent. So I factor out that I. So VA equals I times the quantity R1 plus R2. And then that gives us our equivalent resistance. If, if the resistor that replaces the two has a resistance of the sum of the resistors, then it will have the same effect. It will be an equivalent resistance. So resistors in series add the, resist, the equivalent resistance is the sum of the resistors. The equivalent resistance is larger than any individual resistor. And that makes sense in our analogy. Think about it, the resistors were tasks. And so if there are more tasks, more things you need to do during the day, it's going to be more difficult. So here we show two simulation circuits for comparison. So the first circuit on the left has two resistors in series, a two kilo ohm followed by a one kilo ohm. They are both on the only path there is to the top of the battery to get to the bottom of the battery. So they see the same current. So they are in series and their equivalent resistance will be the sum of the resistances. Two plus one is three. And so that's the resistance we see over on the right hand circuit. So they have the, the, the simulations have the same battery and we've replaced the two resistors in series with one and it should have its equivalent resistance and we see in the ammeter that they are seeing the same current. So they have the resistors in series and the equivalent resistance have the same effect. Sometimes in our analogy we focus on like what one charge sees or does but uh, here we want to talk about that what really a current is a lot of charges and so you are just one charge among many. So if the task is a difficult one, then not many people are going to take it on. So if the resistance is high, the current is going to be low. This is just a simple consequence of Ohm's law of V equals IR. If R is big for the same V, then the I will be small. Or if R is small, the I will be big. We can also ask what happens if we were to change the voltage if we had more energy. So if more of us had more energy, then more of us would take on a given task. So in V equals IR, if V is bigger, the current's going to be bigger. Similarly, if V is small, if we're all tired out, then fewer of us are going to take on the task, even a basic task. So in V equals IR, if V is small, I will be small. Next, we will move on to consider resistors in parallel. This is when the path 
from the big side of the battery to the small side of the battery is not unique so that there is a, a choice in the path and that the paths have tasks and the tasks may have different resistances, may have different difficulties. And then it won't surprise you that, that more of the charges will take the easier path, the, the path of least resistance. And so as we move into this, we're considering resistors in parallel. In this picture, we have resistors in parallel. The current comes out of the battery, and then it reaches that point marked junction. And then some of the current will proceed through the R1 resistor, whereas other current will go over to the R2 resistor. Then those currents will sort of recombine at the junction at the bottom and then return to the other side of the battery. So here we have a more diagrammatic picture of two resistors in parallel, a one kilo ohm and a two kilo ohm resistor in parallel. So what's important is how they are connected. So there is a wire connecting the top of resistor one to the top of resistor two. It doesn't matter that that connection is also connected to the battery. What matters is the connection on one side of the two resistors. Likewise, on the other side, there is a connection of wire between the one kilo ohm resistor and the two kilo ohm resistor on the bottom. So that, that combined connection of wire on one side and connection of wire on the other side is what makes two resistors be in parallel. And it's what gives you a choice in the path. You can take, because of the connection at the top, you can go either through the one or through the two, and then it recombines back up. We're imagining this ideal situation where the wire is perfectly conducting, and so no voltage is dropped across the wire. All voltage is dropped across the resistor. And therefore, coming in on the left, the, the voltage going into resistor 1 and the voltage going into resistor 2 are the same. No voltage can be dropped on the wire. And on the other side, uh, when we're leaving on the right, the, again, the voltages must be the same. So the voltage change of R1 must be the same as the voltage change of R2. So V1 equals V2. But the current is split. So the current will either come to the junction and the current will either go through R1 and R2 and then recombine. So the current adds up I, I equals I1 plus I2, but the voltages are the same. They both see the same voltage. So now we want to come up with a formula for the equivalent resistance when the resistors are in parallel. So we're going to start with this idea that the two currents add up to the total current. So I is equal to I1 plus I2. The equivalent resistor is going to be a resistor, of course, and the two individual resistors were resistors, and resistors obey Ohm's law. So I have, I started off with currents, so I'm going to solve Ohm's law for current. So if I say V equals I R and solve it for current, that's V over R. And so for each current I put in, it's V over R. So I have V A B over the equivalent resistance is equal to V1 over R1 plus V2 over R2. Again, substituting in V over R for my currents. But as we've argued, all the Vs are the same for resistors in parallel. And therefore, all those numerators have the same V, and I can divide through by that V, and the Vs get replaced by ones. And now I'm left with a formula for the equivalent resistance of resistors in parallel. And this is a reciprocal addition. The, the resistors are in the denominator with a numerator of one. So just to recap, resistors in parallel add reciprocally. The equivalent resistance is going to be smaller. That formula leads to a smaller equivalent resistance than either of the individual resistance that went into it. And that's because you have a choice. And it's always easier when you have a choice than when you don't have a choice. So we're showing here, for comparison's sake, two simulations. The first simulation on the left has two resistors in 
parallel, the two and the one. There's a connection of wire on the top connecting one to two, and there's a connection of wire on the bottom connecting one to two. Therefore, one and two were in parallel. We could apply that reciprocal addition and find the equivalent resistance. I've done that and came up with two thirds. And then I replace the two resistors with the one resistor with the equivalent resistance and put it in the same circuit with the same battery. And then you can see that the ammeter is reading the same current. So it does have the same effect. It is an equivalent resistance. There are various ways to do this calculation. I'm just going to show you one. And that is that the calculators have a built in reciprocal button, which can be useful. So let's say we had a resistance of 2.3 and a resistance of 3.4 and they were in parallel then I can using the calculator enter 2.3 and hit the reciprocal button and then hit the addition sign because I'm going to add that then enter 3.4 and the reciprocal button then the equal which will perform the addition be between the two reciprocals and then one final reciprocal to get the answer so again, the formula has three reciprocals, so our calculation must have three reciprocals, the most common mistake being to forget that last reciprocal. In our analogies, it's sometimes useful to think about one charge and what it would do, and other times think about many charges and their effect on each other. So if we were thinking about this in terms of one charge, you would say there were there were two paths in the parallel resistors, one task was easier. And so why that one charge should choose the easier path and then all of the charges should should make make that same choice, but they interact with each other. So a, a an analogy which has sort of a, a many charge concept built in, let's talk about uh, a fire in a theater. So everybody has to leave the theater at once they have some interaction with each other. So it's not just an empty theater with a couple of people in it uh, evacuating, but a, a full theater. And so there's some large door, say in the back where everybody came in, then it's easy to get out. And then there's some little fire door up front um, that not as many people can get through. But when the, you know, the fire alarm goes off and everybody must get out, some people are going to find it beneficial to go through the smaller door just because that saves them from interacting with the larger crowd going through the back door. So here's sort of a recap, but also a comparison of series and parallel. Resistors in series see the same current. Their voltages add up to some total voltage and their equivalent a resistance is the sum of the two resistances, making for a larger equivalent resistance. Resistors in parallel see the same voltage. Their currents add up to some total current and their resistances add reciprocally to get the equivalent resistance and the, the overall equivalent resistance is lower than either uh, component resistance. The concept of series in parallel is not limited to resistors. In fact, it's an important concept in the way data moves around within a computer. A connection is said to be serial if all the bits moving through the circuit take the same path. So the, the bits then move through the circuit one by one, the same way as charges moving through serial uh, connected resistors have to move through one resistor and then the next, the bits move through the circuit one by one, the, all taking the same path. A connection is said to be parallel if there's a set of paths and then the different bits can take uh, different paths and then sort of regroup at the end. So bits can uh, move uh, simultaneously. The concept of series and parallel is also important when measuring various quantities in circuit. A multimeter is a measuring device that can be set up to measure different quantities. If the voltmeter, if the meter is set up as a voltmeter and we want to measure the voltage across a resistance, then the voltmeter is in parallel with the resistor. Remember that things in parallel see the same voltage. So we want the voltmeter and the resistance to see the same voltage. If the voltmeter is to measure the voltage of the resistor, it should be seeing the same voltage and things in parallel are, have the same voltage. 
If the meter is multimeter set up as an ammeter, then we want it to measure current. And then if we wanted to measure the current through a resistor, we would put the ammeter in series with that resistor. Remember that things in series see the same current and thereby placing the ammeter in series with the resistor, the ammeter sees the same current as resistor and it's measuring the current of the resistor. If you wanted to measure the uh, resistance of a circuit, then this is when you uh, set the multimeter up as an ohmmeter and you will remove the resistor from the circuit so that, there, that the only sort of source of power is coming from the ohmmeter itself. This diagram shows a voltmeter in parallel with a one kilo ohm resistor. First, we connect the voltmeter in parallel because things in parallel see the same voltage and we want the meter to, to be the same voltage as what it's measuring the voltage of, the one kilo ohm resistor. The second thing to note is that the voltmeter is given a very high resistance. We know that resistors in parallel add reciprocally. And if we look at our formula there and we think that RV is the resistance of the voltmeter, if that resistance is quite high, then that term has little effect and the equivalent of the one kilo ohm and the voltmeter is pretty much still just R1 by itself. So the voltmeter has little effect. In this diagram, we show an ammeter in series with the one kilo ohm resistor. We connect it in series because things in series see the same current and we want the ammeter to see the same current as the one kilo ohm resistor in this case. Also, the ammeter is given a very low resistance. We know that equivalent resistance for resistors in series is the sum of the resistors. So if the R equivalent of resistor one and the resistor of the ammeter, we want RA to be very small so that the equivalent of the resistor and the meter is pretty much still just R1. In other words, the ammeter has little effect. When we set up a multimeter as an ohmmeter, it's important to take the thing that we are measuring the resistance of out of any circuit and just have the resistors and the multimeter. This gives us a way to test continuity. So a cable is just basically a, a wire, a conductor, and it should have a low resistance. But a, a broken cable will have some kind of insulator in between, an air or something like that, and will have a high resistance. So to check that a cable is good, we're going to use an ohmmeter. So we remove the cable from any circuit because we're using an ohmmeter. We set up our multimeter as an ohmmeter and we measure a resistance and we should find a low resistance. That would say we have we have continuity. If we have a high if we get a high resistance, it there's a broken cable. Uh, uh, often talked about the battery as being sort of a source of energy and there's an important concept in physics that energy is conserved and it is neither lost nor gained but just put into some different form and so in a resistor circuit what is that different form the there was some energy in the original form of the battery and that energy is lost when the current goes from one side of the battery to the other so where has that energy gone and in a just a simple standard resistor circuit, that energy becomes heat. So that's how a toaster works, that we are taking advantage of that heat in that case.